I have a question for all of you, which is, where are we? Have a look up on the map. Took this screenshot um, not that long ago. And I love that actually this is updated for a little while. Google Maps had some pretty old satellite photography. So for example, you couldn't see um, you know, beautiful J block on there. I'll get it. That's right. Good morning. Come and grab the door, please. Uh, and it looks pretty good from the air, right? I mean, it looks good from the ground too. But my question to you is, where are we? Now, um, that's not a rhetorical question. Um, we can actually, we know where we are right now, situated, right? I wonder if you've got a good enough sense of spatial awareness to know. I mean, I've put um, some coordinates uh, across the top and along the side. Where would you describe us now? What would you say? It's a bit tricky. I haven't given the finest scale, but that's because I just didn't want to cover this with grid lines everywhere. Five, around five. Five is not a bad. Uh, yeah, it's some. It's somewhere going to be somewhere between four and five. Four. Might be closer to four actually, because we're right on this end yeah. of the building. Yeah, well, I should say that end of the building, right? Um, and then in terms of letters, four. yeah, between between G and H, aren't we? G and a half, whatever that is. Okay. So what you're using right now, of course, is a coordinate system that requires a horizontal coordinate, which is the letters, and a vertical coordinate, which is the numbers. Um, can you tell I used to play chess when I was a little kid? Now, we're used to understanding this kind of coordinate system. Roughly speaking, this is what we use on the Cartesian plane, right? And therefore, we've kind of borrowed that idea, moving into what we're looking at now, which is not the Cartesian plane, it's the? It's the, we call them Argand diagrams when you've got complex numbers on there, but broadly speaking, they're called, it's called the complex plane, right? Same idea. So this is a way of describing where you are. Any complex number you can think of, if you provide a horizontal coordinate and a vertical coordinate, it's like, bam, that's where I am. I can know precisely. But I wonder if you noticed, and it's even on this uh, screenshot itself, this is not the only way that we can describe our position. I'm not worrying about precision and that kind of thing. There's a whole different way to actually describe where you are that has nothing to do with horizontal or vertical. And I admit, it's, um, it's kind of stuck down in the corner and it's very small, so if you had my eyesight and you're in the back of the room, you would not be able to see it. But let me zoom in and help you out. Down here, do you notice, um, there's another pair of coordinates, but they're not horizontal or vertical coordinates. What are these numbers? What do they signify? This is longitude and latitude, right? Now, when you look closely at longitude and latitude, it's been a while since many of you have thought about this. Go back to like year seven and eight geography, that kind of thing, or earlier actually. Latitude and longitude, as you can see by the units themselves, right? They're not about like meters, kilometers, that kind of thing. What units are they in? Degrees, Degrees and minutes and seconds, right? Um, by the way, does anyone know why they're called minutes? Minutes, like degrees are like, you know, degrees of separation. Why are they called minutes? Yeah, go ahead, Jack. Okay, they're a 60th each of a degree. In other words, they're a minute portion of a degree, right? When, when a degree is not sufficiently small. Does anyone know why degrees are in their minutes and then they're called seconds? Anyone know why they're called seconds? It's because it's the second minute division when a minute is not enough. So you can see there are the markings there. Now, degrees, minutes, seconds, what are they? They are not measures of, of distance. They're measures of angle, angle of, of rotation, right? Now, the reason why, and at this point, I'm going to ask you, good morning, grab a seat. At this point, I'm going to ask you to pick up your pen slash pencil. Um, I haven't told you what the heading is yet. We'll come to that in a minute. And I'd love you to do your very best to draw something like what I'm about to show you. The reason why we can have a coordinate system that's not just horizontal vertical, but can also be in terms of rotation and angle, is because we live on a globe. We live on something that's roughly spherical. It's of course not exactly spherical, but it's close enough for our purposes. And we have these things, sorry, um, called poles, right? We've got a North Pole and a South Pole, and we use that as our reference point, right? Now, if we say, okay, if I think about, say, from the North Pole, right? If we look at the Earth from the point of view of the North Pole, 
Uh, this is what you look at, right? This is what you see. And because the Earth is round, uh, we can think about, for example, from one of these lines going around. Does anyone know what they're called, by the way? Apart from lines of longitude, there's a special name. It starts with an M. It's a pretty old-fashioned. Yeah, they're called meridians, right? Very good. Not a common word, so don't worry about it if you don't know it. We can take these meridians and describe them as angles around a point, right? You just need to pick one of the meridians to be like your main one, and then you measure from there, right? Now, if I'm um, eyeballing this correctly, the main one, oops, let's, uh, oh no, I'll stay with this car. The main one is around, oh, I remember looking this up. It's around here. This particular meridian, it doesn't go, um, I can't show it all the way because this only has the, the northern, uh, the very, very northern part of the Earth. Um, this one's going to go through a very special place in the UK. Does anyone know where it goes through? It goes through Greenwich, right? So, um, you know, you can think about Greenwich Mean Time being measured from here. Yeah, yeah. By the looks of it, it looks like a French one, not a British one. Say it again, sorry? By the looks of it, it looks like a French one, not a French one. Oh, you're talking about the map, you mean? Or that particular line? Yeah, I might have, it might have been this one that I wanted to pick, so I'm just in a vague ballpark, right? Um, yeah, I know. Yeah, I, well, I think that's the UK there. Yeah. Yeah, right? Like yeah, you're right. I think French it's... One. Yeah, so maybe the one over to the next. So the idea here is, though, whichever one you choose, it really is actually arbitrary, right? You pick a meridian. This one is the prime meridian, whichever one it is. And then you can see if I want to get to anywhere, p describe a place anywhere on this surface, I can then just rotate around a particular angle. And that's, that's the angles that you saw at the bottom of this map over here. And then I can also rotate in this other direction around the Earth. And that's um, latitude, not longitude, right? So because this is based on poles, right? You need a North Pole, you need a South Pole. Um, we call these not Cartesian, right, like X and Y coordinates. We call these polar coordinates because they're based on poles, right? So that's the heading I would like you to make. Polar coordinates. This is a way that if we can describe the Earth like this, well, we can describe anything in, in two dimensions like this as well. So let's come to the world that we're more familiar with or we've been working with over the last little while, right? Let's see appropriate color. Here we go. So if I have some arbitrary complex number, right? Um, so far we have been labeling these complex numbers as A plus IB. There's a real component, there's an imaginary component. But to sort of strengthen this connection with the, with the Cartesian plane, which is so much like this, we want to take advantage of all the intuition you've developed over the course of many years about the Cartesian plane. We also will equally, you'll see this um, just as frequently as A plus IB, we sometimes um, describe these complex numbers as X plus IY. Because the X, being the real component, tells you where you are horizontally. And the Y being the imaginary component tells you where you are vertically, okay? So you've got your X and you've got your Y. Now, how do I take advantage of this polar idea, right? Well, to get there in terms of these horizontal and vertical components, I just go X and then Y. But a polar coordinate needs a direction, an angle to rotate to, right? I want something that takes me to this point Z. Now just like with the Earth, in some senses uh, we could measure from anywhere. We could have put the prime meridian anywhere that we liked. In fact throughout history people have put their prime meridian in lots of different places because surprise surprise everyone draws their map with their own location at the center. At least that's where we started, right? So that's arbitrary but for some really good reasons, I'm going to ask you for one in a second, we have chosen the positive side of the real axis, the positive side of the real axis, we've chosen that as our prime meridian, where we start measuring from. Would anyone like to give me some suggestions why that might be a good place to define from? Any takers? Because it, I mean, it could have been, could have been here. We measure north from here, right? And then true bearings go around this way. We referred to that last week. Any takers? Why, why does this make sense as a place to start? Think back to our first lesson as a class together. Where did numbers begin again? What kinds of numbers did we start with? Real we started with, oh, before real, way before real numbers. We started with counting numbers, right? So the counting numbers would be like, you know, one and then two and then three and so on. And then we started to fill in the numbers between the counting numbers. So we would say, oh, you've got all the, the fractions. And then after that, we started thinking about integers. So that's this negative side over here. So for a long time, you know, this, this part 
of the complex plane. That's the only part we really knew about. And in fact, you've pretty much been doing maths in that part and, and in this part for like years and years and years, right? It's a good place to actually use as our reference point. So therefore, what we say is, let's measure up an angle from the positive side of the real axis. Let's call that theta, okay? Now, unlike our, um, unlike our globe, which has two poles, a north and a south, our complex plane really kind of only has one pole, and that is right there in the center. It's the origin, where the axes meet. Okay? So as a consequence, rather than using a second angle of rotation, I've got one. There's theta, measured from the positive real axis. To get to z, after you know which direction you're facing in, you just have to know how far along to go, that distance in there. Okay? Now, for reasons that will become clear a little bit later on, I'm going to call that r. Right? So if we know r and we know theta, then just like if we knew x and y, we can know exactly where z should be. Does this make sense? 